You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production in association with City News. It's always entertaining to hear average reactions to the things in outer space that science can't quite explain. Lately, there have been a bunch of those. Okay, it's a mysterious radio signal pulsing with constant regularity. Stay with us here. They're called fast radio bursts, or FRBs, and they were detected using a radio telescope in Canada called CHIME. I'll get this out of the way first. No, sadly, it's not aliens. But also, we still don't know exactly what caused this fast radio burst. The first one we've seen with a distinct repeating pattern. Fast radio bursts themselves are fascinating, and we've only known about them for 15 years. As our equipment and knowledge of space exploration gets better and better, we are finding more and more things that we can't quite explain. Each discovery poses more questions than answers at first, but eventually, We find the answers, and they unlock even more questions, which leads to more discovery. And if we keep exploring and discovering, at the end of that chain is the answer to the question we've been asking forever. Are we alone? I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. This is The Big Story. Marina Corin is a staff writer at The Atlantic, where she covers all things space. Hey, Marina. Hi, Jordan. How are you? I am doing really well. I want to start first by asking you about the Canadian connection to this phenomenon we're about to discuss. Uh, tell me about the Canadian project that found this thing. That's right. So, yeah, the Canadian telescope that was behind the latest research on fast radio bursts and actually has contributed quite a lot to fast radio burst science is called CHIME. And CHIME stands for the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, which is a very fancy name to describe what is basically a radio telescope that is ground-based and spends its time scanning the skies for interesting radio signals and any other weird stuff that's reaching Earth from the cosmos. Okay, so speaking of weird stuff reaching Earth from the cosmos, now you have to explain to me, like I'm an idiot, and also to our listeners, what exactly a fast radio burst is. Right, yeah, it's not exactly a you know, common, not many people know what fast radio bursts are. And I promise that I did not know what they were when I first started (laughs) in science journalism. So a fast radio burst is a very brief flash of radio missions that comes from far beyond the Milky Way galaxy and somehow manages to travel all that way to reach us here on Earth and our telescopes and this Canadian telescope. And astronomers call fast radio bursts FRBs for short. And they are just super short-lived, very intense events, and CHIME is great at catching them. And they come from all directions in the night sky, and astronomers believe that they're coming at us all the time. They're just so ubiquitous out there. How long have we been finding these things? And and how, I mean, I guess you already kind of uh, mentioned this, but do we have any idea how many there are? This particular field of astrophysics is actually very new. The very first FRB was detected in 2007. And at the time, astronomers weren't quite sure what they were looking at. At first, they thought that the flash that their telescope detected could be noise coming from the actual telescope and its instruments. And They thought maybe this was a technical aberration of some kind. And that's usually what astronomers first think when their telescopes discover something new and weird because, one, telescope data can be really noisy. And two, what are the chances that what you're seeing is a completely new astrophysical phenomenon? So they were skeptical at first because they could see that these radio signals, whatever they were, just by looking at the nature of these emissions, they could tell that these flashes were coming from billions of light years away. And yet they were still powerful enough that by the time they reached us here on Earth, we could detect them. And that seemed pretty weird. But 
scientists kept detecting them and finding more, finding dozens, hundreds, and it turned out to be something real. It turned out to be a real astrophysical event that no one had ever seen before. Do we know what they are and what causes them? So that is the big mystery. <laughs> um, right. So scientists think that these FRBs are, are caused by certain kinds of stars known as a neutron star. And a neutron star isn't anything like our own star. It's not a sun-like star at all. It's the leftover core of a once giant star that burned through its fuel and has entered a new stage of existence. Hmm. And there's more than one type of neutron star. And this is where things get a little bit funky because these stars have some pretty weird names. There's something called a pulsar, which is a neutron star that rotates really fast and spits out beams of radiation from its poles. And there's something known as a magnetar, which sounds like something out of Greek mythology, but it's a neutron star that's known for powerful magnetic fields. And astronomers think that pulsars or magnetars might be the answer to the big FRB mystery because the way these particular stars behave and the way that cosmic material around them behaves, that can produce the kind of intense radio signals that can travel through space at large distances and eventually reach us. So that's great background on FRBs in general. But now, the reason we're speaking to you today is because recently, this Canadian telescope that we were just discussing found a different kind of FRB, right? A peculiar one. What is it and what's so important or unusual about this one? Yeah, I mean, I love this result because when I emailed and called my sources about it, they're like, this is huge in the FRB field, <laughs> which is <laughs> small, but this was a, an exciting, a big day for them. It's a big headline in a tiny newspaper. Yeah, I mean, they have an FRB newsletter and everything where they report new detections. It's a, it's a really vibrant and growing community. Um, so most FRBs, as I said, they're super short-lived. They only last a few milliseconds or so. But this one that was most recently detected lasted a thousand times longer than that. And a thousand times longer for an FRB means it lasts three seconds, which is right. nothing to us. But it's very unusual for a fast radio burst, which is supposed to be fast and burst-like, right? It's not supposed to last for three seconds. So that's that was weird. And not only was this a long FRB, there was also something unusual about the signal itself. Inside the radio emissions, there were these little pulses that seemed to follow a clear-cut pattern. There would be these little peaks in intensity about every 0.2 seconds. And that's something that scientists haven't seen before. They have previously detected an FRB source that repeats so it, it will flicker on for a few days before quieting down again and then starting back up again um, but this was the first time that the actual signal itself the f like the flash that they were seeing had a rhythm inside of it had a pattern within the signal itself and that's very new and that's why the the frb community was very excited what are the ramifications of that amongst that community you know all of a sudden you have something that's so wildly different uh from what we've seen in the past and in a strict pattern uh as opposed to random bursts which must suggest all sorts of things to people right i think scientists are definitely excited about the fact that they might be you know, missing this whole class of very long FRBs that they hadn't seen before, because since 2007, they thought that FRBs are very short lived, a few milliseconds long. That's what they were looking for. So if they saw something longer in their telescope data, they might have thrown it out because they didn't think that's what FRBs are like. But now they're realizing maybe there's a whole variety to, to these events that there might be longer bursts and they might have more chances of catching those and then studying them. And I think it does it does strengthen the case for pulsars, these neutron stars, being responsible for creating some, at least some FRBs, because scientists have observed and studied pulsars within our own Milky Way galaxy, and they've seen that these objects function almost as astrophysical clocks. They give off radio emissions in clean patterns and they're very reliable. So maybe that's what we're seeing, but, you know, from another galaxy far, far away. But for the first time, we're seeing that pattern very clearly. Now, for the non-FRB community, um, you know I have to ask this question because it's the one everybody gets to, is we all of a sudden get a signal from a galaxy far, far away. And unlike random noise, it is in a strict pattern and it's, you know, recognizable and repeatable. I know that it's not true in this case, but what are the chances that this is how we learn about 
extraterrestrial life. It makes itself known in in this sort of almost unrecognizable yet recognizable pattern. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. This always comes up with FRP stories. And I have to ask my sources because I need to include, you know, our readers are going to want to know, is this aliens? So I always, every time I call them, like, I have to ask, is, is this it? Is this something interesting? Is and, this aliens? Again. Right. And every time the answer is no. Um, but it's completely understandable uh. why we get excited, because this is the kind of thing that we're supposed to get excited about when we're thinking about advanced life beyond Earth, right? Patterns, evidence of organization, a sign of intent. Uh, but unfortunately, the natural universe is actually very quite good at creating patterns and pulses. It's common for normal astrophysical sources like pulsars to show periodic signals like the one that was most recently detected. So it's weird, but weird doesn't necessarily mean it's not nature. And I talked to one astronomer who works on SETI, which is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And she said that if the FRB, if the source was pulsing out the digits of pi, then that's when they'd call her in. You know, if there was, I guess you could say, a pattern within the pattern, something that indicated something more. And that's what SETI researchers are looking for. They're looking for a signal that they feel confident that nature cannot make. And so far, FRBs don't fall into that category. What are they good for then, if not telling us that aliens exist? Like, I, I'm only being tongue-in-cheek there, but what could figuring out uh, these FRBs tell us about galaxies in the universe? Yeah, I mean, it's great fodder for the FRB newsletter, right? <laughs> um, but no, there's more to it than that. I think, you know, because let's say FRBs are produced by pulsars, and pulsars are known to be pretty reliable in the way that they emit radio emissions, so astronomers have used pulsars in our galaxy to study other types of astrophysical phenomena because they can kind of trace these radio missions and, and see where they go and, and use them to understand other celestial objects. I, it, they kind of illuminate other parts of the universe to us. Um, you know, astronomers have managed to learn something about Jupiter's atmosphere, I think, just by studying the way that pulsars behave. Uh, because a lot of astronomy is just looking at one type of thing to try to study another type of thing. And pulsars really help in that. Um, and I think it'll just help uh, us understand the universe more, right? I mean, only since 2007 have astronomers been, been detecting these pulses. And that's not so long ago. You know, the, the universe is a lot more mysterious and weirder than we ever imagined and frbs are they're a great big mystery and the universe is full of mysteries and i think they they remind us that we have to keep you know trying to understand these things and seeing what else we can learn from them well that's why i wanted to talk about the big picture for a minute and this is not strictly an frb question but you know if this phenomenon was only detected in 2007 and now uh, we're realizing thanks to this new discovery that there might be whole other kinds of these things out there that we don't know it feels to an observer and uh, listeners of this show will know that i love to talk about space and i love to ask the is it aliens question but on a more serious note it feels like we are making rapid progress at detecting unusual things in outer space more so than we had been in the decades previous. Um, and again, that's a layperson's estimation. So I'll ask you because this is your beat. Like, is the rate of discovery speeding up? I think it is. I think we're in a pretty interesting moment right now. And I should say that when pulsars were first detected, but maybe the 1960s, astronomers also thought that was really weird. They thought that was a telescope issue. So <laughs> a lot of the things that come up and you're like, huh, what is that? And it turns out to be a real thing that's super exciting but you know just a few weeks ago uh, we the public saw the very first images from the james webb space telescope which is an international effort by nasa the european space agency and the canadian space agency to capture the most ancient light in the universe to capture the way that stars and galaxies looked like at the very beginning just after the big bang and JWST, this is a super ambitious space telescope, 100 times more powerful than Hubble. And NASA expects that it will be functional for the next 
20 years. And I have chills just talking about this. Number one, because I'm overwhelmed about how I'm going to cover all this. But two, because, you know, when Hubble launched, we didn't quite know how flush the universe was with galaxies. You know, think of the Hubble deep field and how that really revealed to us the the richness and fullness of the universe. The James Webb Space Telescope is going to do that. And it's going to uncover things that scientists are going to say, wait, is this just a glitch or is this something real? So I think we're in for 20 years of really exciting discovery because of that mission. How many things are out there? I know you can't answer this with a number, but how many things like FRBs are out there that we're going to find and be like, holy crap, what is this? And then figure out how it pertains to us or how it pertains to the universe. Oh boy. Yeah. That's such a big question. (laughs) I think it's, it's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Yeah. It's as unknowable as the universe itself, right? I think, I think it's possible. And astronomers and scientists I talk to, they feel confident that in the next 15, 20, maybe 30 years, we might discover evidence of microbial life elsewhere in the solar system, right? We might finally get the answer to the question, are we alone? You know, it won't be the same as detecting a beacon spitting out the digits of pi coming out from another galaxy, but it will answer a very fundamental question. And I think the missions that are um, launching now, the telescopes that are coming online, it's definitely the most, I think the human species has never been better positioned to answer really big questions about the universe because the technology is so advanced now more than ever before. So uh, I think the next half century will be really exciting, slightly terrifying, maybe, if we're answering very existential questions. And maybe we might even solve the FRB mystery. That would be pretty exciting. Last question. Have you ever thought about how you will cover that day if it happens when we find evidence of microbial life or anything else that tells us we're not alone? Yeah, I recently went to a SETI conference in Pennsylvania that was held in like a Like if you walked into the room, you might think, oh, this is the Association of Dermatologists or like, you know, it it just looked so, so mundane and like a typical conference. But the people engaged there were engaged in trying to answer, you know, what what approaches should we take to try to find evidence of alien life? Where should we look? How should we look? How should we listen? And I remember telling everyone I met there, okay, when when you discover something, you call me. (laughs) I want to know first. And I think it's going to be an interesting story because astronomers might detect something and they think it's weird and they're not sure what causes it, but they getting to the answer of what exactly it is might be similar to this FRB story, right? You know, 15 years of detections, we still don't know what causes it. It's possible that astronomers might detect something weird, but they can't say for sure what's making it, right? You know, even if you do detect something that screams, oh, it's aliens, you know, how far are they? Do they still exist? Like, what is, what is the signal? There are so many, you know, one answer I think will prompt even more questions. I think it'll be super exciting, but oh boy, I'm, I'm interested to see how people react. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Marina, thank you so much for this. I love a good space talk. Thanks so much, Jordan. This was fun. Marina Corin, getting ready to one day write that headline in The Atlantic. That was The Big Story. For more from us, head to thebigstorypodcast.ca. Talk to us on Twitter at thebigstoryfpn. Email us, hello, at thebigstorypodcast.ca. And call us and leave us a voicemail. Send us a fast radio burst. 416-935-5935. If you've got a place where you can review this podcast, I hope that you do so. Tell them I sent you. Say hi. Thanks for listening. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. We'll talk tomorrow.